two games at halftime and two others underway in the second half. We'll take you there for a live look as we update you on what's happening in this first round NCAA tournament action. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg here in our studio in New York. At halftime, Arkansas is leading Georgetown by a score of 31 to 30. There really doesn't seem to be much to separate these two teams tonight. There really isn't. Three-point shooting, three made for Arkansas, two for Georgetown. Surprisingly, though, Greg, Arkansas has out-rebounded Georgetown in that first half. One of these teams is going to spur it away. If Arkansas does, it'll be with the three. If Georgetown does, it'll be because of their strength and size. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, uh, they're just underway in the second half in Uniondale. Southern Utah with a six point lead on Boston College, 39 to 33. The number three seed trails by six. Let's take you there live. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. Opening moments of the second half of play, and the Southern Utah Thunderbirds lead the Eagles from Boston College, 39 33. Set off the mark, outlet pass Bell all alone, who jams it down. And that's a feel good field goal. It's the first field goal of the game and that always feels good. Troy Bell would have preferred to get his first field goal before the start of the second half but he'll take it. Now Monaco straight to the basket block tipped up and in. Either Buse or Wheeler. I think that was Wheeler Gus. It's Boston. Co no they give it to Buse but it's Boston College that did the damage on the offensive boards in the first half 16 second chance points for the Eagles. That's what kept him in the game. Here's that matchup zone defense that was so tough for BC in the first half. Walls looking inside. Singletary across the lane. Tipped up and in. Agbai. And he's really worked hard on the offensive glass. Eight points. Gus, that is now 14 offensive rebounds for Boston College. And 18 second chance points. Boston College trying to pick up the tempo defensively as well. Touch foul up top, Harley. And Boston College really wanted to get the defense going a little bit there. A good block out by Singletary, and as a result, an easy basket. Don't play against that set zone. Then the ball goes inside. The defense commits to the to the guy with the ball, and as a result, nobody's available to block out Agba. Harley with two fouls. 41 37 house spinning a travels the bracket here in the east Nassau Coliseum on Long Island Iowa winning today over Creighton Kentucky over Holy Cross and a close one and now BC in southern Utah there's that zone and again the zone moves very rapidly toward the ball good ball movement has created some openings at least for offensive rebounds Bell dumps it down Singletary foul BC wanted to try to get the ball inside and there's Bell penetrating past the defense creating a five on four situation and then finding the open guy. John Wheeler picks up his third. So Boston College within four now. Southern Utah 41-37 over the Eagles. In Greensboro, Monmouth and trailed Duke 62-29 at halftime. Early in the second half, it's now a 73-32 lead. Duke guard Chris Duhon will dish out to Jason Williams. Duke hit their first three threes of the night and grabbed an early 9-0 lead. And then Williams will steal the inbounds pass here, lay it in. It's an early 11-point lead, and the assault just continues. And the eruption continues as well. Penetration Dunleavy. Jason Williams is 4-3. Duke was up 14 at that point. Shane Battier shooting well. Jason Williams shooting well. Duke shooting well, 73, 32, under 15 and a half to play in the second half. We thank you for watching Singular at the Half. Back to San Diego for the second half of Kent State and Indiana right after this. Singular at the Half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. A couple of times in this game, Gus, when he gets the ball out on the fast break, he can really finish at the other end. Red House can score punches, points rather, in bunches. Pull up jump shot. In and out. Rebounded by Buse. 
Walls can't get it to stay down. Use with four rebounds. House now. I don't think Southern Utah wants to get in a game with quick threes with Boston College. In the corner again, and this time it stays down. So Boston College pulls even at 43 with Southern Utah 16-10 to play in the second half. In Uniondale, Boston College and Southern Utah, well, you just saw what happened. Let's go to Monmouth and Duke in Greensboro. Kevin Harlan and John Sunvold. Kevin Harlan with John Sunvold, and let's send it over to the third member of our crew, Charles Davis. Thanks, Kevin. You know, I talked with Coach Steve Wojciechowski, one of the assistant coaches from Duke in pregame, and said, how's Carlos Boozer doing? He gave me a little smile and said, I think he'll be back Monday or Tuesday of next week. Maybe not 100%, but, you know, when you got 6'9", 265 on the court, even not 100%, that makes us all very, very happy. Charles, sounds like you when you were playing at Tennessee, you always fought through injuries to play. He's got your same attitude and grit. Yeah, Boozer, 14 points, nearly seven rebounds of all game. And that's a foul inside. I think Christensen was trying to shove his way through a pick, or maybe it was uh, Williams. It was on Jason Williams. Great to have you folks with us here in Greensboro. And coming up next will be an eight against a nine, Georgia against Missouri, promising to be one of the more entertaining games of this Thursday. And there have been some interesting upsets already all over the tournament. Including here, we're number 12 seed Utah State had a surprising overtime win. A pass inside by Johnson. A little bit too much gas on it. That was knocked away. So the Duke Blue Devils very much in charge against 16 seed Monmouth 73 to 32, 14 45 to play. At halftime, of the Kent State Indiana game in San Diego, the Hoosiers lead the Golden Flashes by a score of 42 to 34. That'll do it for this edition of Singular at the Half. Thanks for joining us. We'll send you back to Boise for the second half of Georgetown, Arkansas after this. Singular at the Half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Underneath the power of the Big Ten, they're ready to apply the needle and a possible upset at any moment. Nothing slow and plodding about this Big Ten team from Indiana, but with Kent State struggling mightily from behind the three-point line, with them turning the ball over far too much, their inability to contain Haston and Coverdale inside, Huffman and Mitchell have to have huge second half if Kent State's going to have a chance to win. Haston right off the opening play gets the easy layup. That's the biggest lead of the game. Indiana by 10 and 16 of those from Kirk Haston. Trevor Huffman, Dimitri Shaw, with uh, Mike Perry, Kyron Massey, and Andrew Mitchell for the Golden Flashes. Same five that started the game. And it's Massey, their leading scorer in the half, and he comes up with a two just inside the line. He leads uh, Kent State with 13. Beautiful step out defensively by Jared Jeffries, Big Ten freshman of the year. And this is a big time play right there. The spin, a very, very difficult shot. Sat called for his first. Sydney. Here comes Troy Bell. Boston College with a couple opportunities to take the lead. Haven't done it yet. Wall sets his feet. And the rebound to Bell. New 35 for the Eagles. Well, I tell you what, if Southern Utah ends up losing this game, all they've got to do is look at the offensive rebounding stats for Boston College to see where they got in trouble. Troy Bell again. There's the Big East Conference Co-Player of the Year. And he's in it. BC up by three. Ten second half points already for Troy Bell. Now Monaco leads in. Loose ball. Out of bounds. Troy Bell gets the opportunity to make this play because they got the ball back on an offensive rebound, but Bell just losing his man on the dribble. Ten second half points, and we've yet to get to the eight minute mark of this second half. We've only played seven and a half. Troy Bell can really score the ball in high school. He averaged 36 points a game as a senior. 
in Minnesota. Well, it's certainly a lot easier for Boston College to attack this zone when they're getting production from Troy Bell. You can see BC 15 to 6 run in the second half to take the three point lead. And one of the big keys here has been the Boston College defense. They have really closed down on the Thunderbirds. Not very many opportunities. Bell again gets set. And another offensive rebound, Sydney. Uh, and it's tipped up and in. You cannot give a team like Boston College three opportunities. They are going to convert, and they're just wearing the Thunderbirds out on the board. Kenny Walls. Eagles extend their lead to five. And if Southern Utah is going to stay in this game, they're in a situation where they almost have to score. And a foul, Sydney. You don't always have to beat a zone by making the first shot. You get some good penetration into the zone. It gives you the opportunity for the offensive board. Pardon the pun is right. <laughs> UCLA advances. How about Utah State? Stu Merle and his Aggies over the Buckeyes of Ohio State, the 12th seed over the 5th seed. Tonight, Duke having their way with uh, Monmouth. And then the late game matches uh, Georgia and Missouri. Yeah, when and up to Uniondale, New York. Earlier, it was uh, Kentucky, the two seed in the east over Holy Cross. And Iowa knocked off Creighton. Southern Utah and Boston College are in a good battle tonight. And the late game matches the Trojans of USC against Oklahoma State. I'm, I'm going to hold my ears too, James. The horn continues to blow in Boise, and we'll take a break. Ten into the second half, and Indiana leading Kent State 49 40. And at the timeouts, Gary Waters uh, opens the classroom. He brings his entire team out almost to the free throw line, sits them down, and uh, goes to the chalkboard. What a terrific teacher Gary Waters is. Why not? Growing up in the Detroit area, he was drafted out of Ferris State by the Detroit Pistons, joining that legendary Piston team that was led by Bob Lanier and Dave Bing, the former St. Bonaventure and Syracuse stars. This Ferris State team went to the NAIA Final Four that featured ML Carr, World Be Free, and Slick Watch. What a Final Four that would have been. The NAIA. NAIW. NAIA. Dean Davenport, the head coach of that Ferris State team. Here comes Jeff Newton, the big center, going all the way and comes up short. On the run, Kent State, down by nine. Mitchell pulls up. Ooh, good rebound and followed by Perry, but it won't fall. And Haston of the rebound, and he's hammered by little Andrew Mitchell, the 5'11 senior from Detroit. I like the free flowing Andrew offense Mitchell. that Indiana is playing with forwards handling the ball. Reminds you of the days of Scott May, last undefeated college basketball team, 1976. Were they 36 and 0? The last Some 32 and 0. 32 and 0, I believe they were. One of six national championships for Indiana as Jared Jeffrey scores, and it's 51 40. Beautiful post feeding. And, and, and that's a horrendous mismatch. There's no way that that's going to happen inside defensively for Jerry Waters. Mitchell waits for the defense to fly by. Perry, another offensive rebound. Around for Kasten and scores. Mike Perry with 10. He's done a nice job in there. He Posi has. Positioned himself, has stroked some perimeter jumpers, set some screens, passed the ball, been the outlet man a few times. Kasten with a turnaround, not there, and Huffman. Pulls it in for Kent State. He had him over the top. He had to beat the beat Shaw. Coverdale with a shoulder picks up the foul. He continues to limp a bit. Third on Coverdale. And for Indiana, it's their fifth team foul. We're going to have to get a report from Leslie on what's wrong with Coverdale's ankle or whatever it is because this guy is really limping and he's going to go to the bench right now. This is not a good sign for Mike Davis. Kyle Hornsby replaces Coverdale. And uh, A.J. Moy back in as uh, Jeff Newton given a rest. Coverdale as the most improved player in the Big Ten this year. Critically important to be a Can't hit the 
at the jumper and uh, the foul underneath is on Jeffries. He moved Perry out, and that's his fourth. Led all conference freshman a year ago as the Big Ten freshman of the year in scoring, rebounds, and blocks during this past season from uh, right there near the Indiana campus in Bloomington. And a turnover, Haston. Can Indiana continue the offensive pace here? Now they're trying to get Jeffries inside. Haston takes it home and scores. And he comes down holding his right ankle. So bodies starting to be punished out there. But the defensive size disparity down the lane is Haston. He lands his right ankle. He landed right on the foot of number 50, Mike Perry. Foul was on Perry, his third. Haston got up, uh, didn't show any noticeable favoring of that ankle as Perry goes out and Rayshon Warren back in for Kent State. Again, they go small now with Perry out of the lineup. Tallest man <laughs> on the floor for them is uh, Warren at 6'6". Going small, they are small. <laughs> Eric Thomas at 6'4", and that's very generous. Kyra Massey, 6'5", extremely generous. Demetric Shaw, they lift at 6'3". Looks like he's a point guard, number 10. But Demetri Shaw, pound for pound, the best player in the entire Mid-American Conference, the match. Back on top by a dozen, and Ray Sean Warren with a sweeping hook inside as his first bucket. The lost art, the sky hook. Great we've, seen, we've seen two of them today. We've seen Haston throw one. Now we've seen Warren throw one. Why don't more players utilize that unstoppable weapon? Game five with a drive. Sets up Hornsby for three. And out of the crowd, oh. Huffman. Ah! Makes it in and scores. Trevor Huffman makes it 40, 54, 46. An eight-point lead now for Indiana. Terrific push of the ball by Huffman, but it was Andrew Mitchell on the weak side. There's a steal. Here's Dimitri Shaw, scores. And that gets the Kent State faithful on their feet as the golden flashes flash in some golden talent. By you now, by six. Al Skinner not pleased. His Boston College Eagles allowing Southern Utah to go on a 9-2 run and reclaim the lead at 55 to 54. Gusson, it's just amazing the resiliency of Southern Utah to have Boston College just pound them like that on the boards, but they just keep coming back. Monaco with four threes and 23 points. Into the corner. Monaco again. Rebounded by Beerbaum. And if Southern Utah expects to win this game, they have got to start doing a better job on the defensive boards. The zone defense has been very effective at limiting the kind of looks that Boston College has been able to get. Not very many wide open ones, but the Eagles continue to work the board. Singletary off the side rim tip. Dan Buse finally gets a defensive rebound for the T-Birds, his eighth rebound of the game. Monaco dumps it down. And the basket will not go. Monaco doing a nice job penetrating to the basket, and Beerbaum belts Buse down on the inside. Looks like Buse belted uh, Beerbaum. As he picks up his second. So Dan Buse at the line, and he has six points. Six forty nine to go. Second half of play. Southern Utah seated 14th against the third seated Boston College Eagles and the Thunderbirds have come to play leading 55 54 and an offensive rebound for Sam. And that's in there and got it. 
The offensive rebounding has been the key for Boston College. They have not shot the ball well, but they have absolutely worn out the Thunderbirds on the offensive boards. House to Monaco. You got to be kidding. Back by with the rebound. Into the front court, Sidney crosses over, loses it, gets it back, leans in, draws contact. Wallen going to pick up the foul. That's just as an example of Sidney being very, very aggressive, not allowing the defense a chance to get set. Boston College trailed by nine in the first half, but the Eagles never appeared to be ruffled or worried. They just kept playing their game, and as I say, the offensive rebounding has been the big key for Boston College. So Sydney at the line, the freshman from Ann Arbor, Michigan, misses the first. He's a 57% free throw shooter, and he may be the most talkative freshman that I've ever met. <laughs> Confident, articulate, he makes some things happen when he goes in the game. We're talking about those offensive rebounds. 27 offensive rebounds for Boston College. Second one off the mark as well. Buse snatches it down with one hand. His ninth. And Buse beginning to assert himself a little bit on the defensive boards. 6-12 to go. And San has been great with the ball against pressure. Wheeler. 20-footer for House. Wheeler had a hand on it, draws the foul. And that'll be the 17th foul against BC. And that foul is against Troy Bell, and that's number four. So Bell with four. Wheeler at the line. A 60% free throw shooter. And with five minutes and 58 seconds left in the game, that is a big, big call. Bell just reaching over as Wheeler's trying to get the ball. And Wheeler gets the front end. So what do you do? Do you leave Troy Bell in the game with 5.58 to go, or do you yank him out? I think you've got to leave him in the game, and you just have to trust Troy Bell to make good decisions out there. 56-54, Southern Utah. Bell. Sydney with the rebound. Harley, ball fake. Ooh, Bell frees himself. Count it. And that's why you leave Troy Bell in the game with those four fouls, his ability to penetrate and get all the way to the basket reduced, but he can still hit the big shot for you. It's a three. BC takes a one-point lead. Bell with 15 now. 13 in the second half of play. Now House, double team, turns it over. Boy, dangerous play. Troy Bell reached in there to help get that steal. Boston College slowing it down a little bit against this zone. Beerbaum looking for the lob inside once again. Sydney for three. Wow. First basket of the game for Ryan Sidney. Boston College takes a four-point lead. And the Thunderbirds really desperate for an answer. Monaco stripped out of bounds. Troy Bell picking up that fourth personal foul, but he beats the defense. Monaco goes for the steal. Now here's Bell. This is a risky play with four personal fouls, but he's able to get the ball out of there. Wow. And House called for a foul. Over aggressive is third. Sixth team foul against the Thunderbirds. And the game summary. Boston College has not shot it well percentage-wise from beyond the arc, but they've got seven three-point field goals and those 27 offensive rebounds, an almost unbelievable statistic. Sydney caught in no man's land. Bell pulls up. And by a rebound. Short. And a foul. And that foul is going to be against Sydney. Boy, Boston College just keeps attacking that offensive board. 
And this offensive board work is really what's bailing Boston College out right now. Agby with a great move to the basket after that offensive rebound, and Sydney comes over the back. I think it'll be House going to the line down on the other end. I'll tell you what, Boston College missing so badly on many of those shots. The rebounds are so long. Gives them a great opportunity to come up with the offensive rebounds as House gets the first. One of the things that they've done, and they've done very well, Gus, for the most part in this game, is they've moved the ball effectively against that zone. And with the way Southern Utah plays the zone, you get good movements, you're going to get opportunities for offensive rebounds. Bill Evans watches his team down by two. Yet he's sitting on the bench with that bad hip that we learned from Leslie Visser. Rayshon Warren on the assist from Trevor Huffman. 58-56 Indiana. Four points for Warren. The competitive response. Who's going to come with it? You got to come to Hastings. He's your best player. But the defense by Kent State stifling here in the second half. Look at Dimitri Shaw work on Owen. Owen's having uh, his difficulty. He, he's having a tough go. Fife against Mitchell. And he throws it away. And Kent State with a turnover has a chance for the lead if they can hit a three. In the midst of a 14 4 run that uh, brings the quizzical look to Coach Mike Davis's brow. Patiently letting his team play through this. What a great run that they've had this year. Not expected to do well in the Big Ten, beating Illinois in the conference tournament. Huffman. That's awesome, Dale. Kevin Harlan sings along from Greensboro. So Duke blows out Monmouth. 95 to 52 is the final score, and uh, you know, Duke's pretty impressive no matter who the competition was. They've been really impressive all year long, but especially in the last couple of weeks without Carlos Boozer, Jason Williams, Shane Battier have carried that team, Chris Duhon. They play at a level that is championship caliber every time they step on the floor. Meanwhile, Arkansas has a four-point lead on Georgetown, 45 to 41, coming up on 14 and a half to play in the second half of this seesaw game. I thought Georgetown's size would be more of a factor. Arkansas just continues to battle and do work, not only on the perimeter, but in the paint as well, Greg. All right, we'll be taking you back to that game, Georgetown, Arkansas in Boise. But right now, in Uniondale, they're under four minutes to play in the second half. Boston College holds a two-point lead on the Thunderbirds of Southern Utah. Let's take you live to Uniondale and join Gus Johnson and Dan Bunn. We'd like the second half. Oh, highly entertaining game. IU by two. Stick a fork in it. The head coach at Southern Utah has guided this team to a 25 and 5 record, 13 and 3 in the Mid-Continent Conference. Al Skinner. On the other sideline, 26 and 4, 13 and 3 in the Big East. Southern Utah shot the ball very well early in the game, got out to a nine point first half lead, but in the second half, the offensive rebounding and the offense of Troy Bell really have taken over. Foul on Monaco, and the T Birds are over the limit. One and one for Sydney. Boston College only shooting 31% for the game, but they have 29 offensive rebounds. One and one for Sydney. And he gets the front end. He just hit a big three a minute ago. This is a very confident young man. To say the least. <laughs> but he backs it up. He's capable of making big plays. He's the Boston College version of a young Muhammad Ali. 62 to 58. Sydney with five. And here comes Sant into the front court. Guarded by Bell playing with four fouls. Buse looking inside. Sant has been quiet today. He averages 10 points a game. He's only got four in this game. Now Monaco finds House. Spins, leads, the bank won't go, and a rebound goes to Harley. House never really had control of that ball after it was passed inside, and now Southern Utah looking for a defensive stop as we're going to go under three minutes. Sydney wide open again. 
And the rebound to Buse is 10th. What good position inside by Buse. Monaco way downtown. Meanwhile, a foul. I believe it's Sydney. Troy Bell struggled in the first half, 0 for 5 from the field, but he has made up for it in the second half, scoring with three-point shots, great moves to the basket, losing the defense on the dribble, and then getting out on the fast break. Bell, who had two points at halftime, now has 15. A pretty impressive display. House gets the first, and Fred has been great from the line, 9 of 10. 19 points, Monaco with 23. Monaco also has five threes. Second free throw, two strong. Use, rebound, he's fouled. Turnabout is fair play, I suppose. That was just a badly missed free throw, and Buse in good position to get the rebound. Did a nice job, Gus. He knew he was going to get fouled, so he threw it up there. Buse short on the first. Now he can't afford to miss opportunities such as this one. Fourteen of nineteen as a team from the line, make it fifteen of twenty. Buse cuts it to two. Now you're looking for that defensive stop again. And again, the problem for Southern Utah hasn't been the first stop. It's been getting the defensive rebound. Now set. Top single, Terry to Bell, driving, pulls up, and draws the foul. Wheeler called for the foul. Test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls through the interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. Troy Bell at the line. Wheeler picked up his fourth. Bell has 15 points on five of 16 shooting. And one of the country's great free throw shooters, almost 86%. As you say it, you jinxed it. Troy Bell's father drives a bus in Minnesota. He's an only child, and his dream to get back to his hometown, hometown of Minneapolis and play for the national championship. Second one good. Three-point game. Southern Utah in the double bonus. Boston College in the one and one. And a timeout called by the T-Birds. 2.16 to play. Three-point game. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Offensive rebounds and second chance points. 29 offensive boards, 30 second chance points for the Eagles. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Gus, when we talked to Bill Evans yesterday, he mentioned to us that Sant, Justin Sant, has hit some big, big shots for Southern Utah this year. And Sant only one for five in the game thus far. Shoots almost 43% from the three-point line. Doesn't have a three today. Monaco, who's been pulling up from the hash mark lately, feeds House for three all alone. Off the heel, rebounded by Monaco. Boy, that's great hustle. Monaco is looking for his shot. Picked up by Sydney. Now House, big possession here for the T-Birds. Monaco catch, short. Loose ball, Buse with the rebound. Monaco alone. Oh, and we're tied at 63. One twenty-four to go. Southern Utah trying to pull off the biggest upset so far. And a time up, BC. They were going to get a three, and they just kept shooting that ball until it went in, and Monaco nailing another one, and the bench reaction was pretty good, too. 
What a game he's had. Six threes for Monaco, 26 points. And here comes Boston College. On a missed shot, let's see if Southern Utah can block out. Troy Bell. Singletary, big jumper. It's a three. Three seconds to go. Boston College up by a tray. House drives, leads, and hits. Timeout, Thunderbirds. 44.8 remaining. One point BC lead. 65, Boston College on top of Southern Utah. 44.8 to go. A 14 seed has beaten a three seed 13 times. In the tournament's history, the last time, 99, Weber State defeated North Carolina. Was that the show? That was Harold the Show Arsenault. You're absolutely right, guys. We're going to have to call Jeff Monaco, Jeff the Show Monaco. Well, now for Southern Utah, you've still got time for a possession. You play good defense without fouling, and you get the defensive rebound, which has been sort of a problematic issue for Southern Utah this evening. About a nine second differential between the game clock and shot clock. Boston College taking their time. Looking for a good one. Singletary. Loose ball, Bell with the rebound. He's fouled. Offensive rebound. Big for BC all evening. That's their 30th. And once again, that's inside. Harley, I think, got his hand on that ball, and that enabled Bell to pull it down. 13.6 to go. Boston College up by one. They've trailed by as many as nine. And Troy Bell, an 85% free throw shooter, will step to the line right after this. Leaving uh, with a total of eight points. So where does the guard play now come for Indiana? When they went with Andre Owens, it, that didn't work. A.J. Moye has got to be in the lineup. Dane Fife as solid as can be. So after he reached in and grabbed the arm of Warren, Coverdale picks up his fourth foul and then... 66-65. Boston College, the game reset. Both teams over the limit. Southern Utah, the double bonus. Al Skinner, white knuckler for him right now, as his best player gets ready to step to the line. That's, Troy Bell. It's a one point lead, even if Bell makes them both, and he's three for four today. That gives Southern Utah a chance for the three to tie the game. And Bell gets the front end. And that was very important. Well, now the Thunderbirds have to block out. They don't want to give up an offensive rebound here. Second one is good. Timeout, Boston College. 13.6 to go. Don't go away. Kent State is fourth best in the entire country in free throw percentage on the season. So playing with the lead, playing with the confidence that Gary Waters has given this team, they quite possibly could be in control with the foul trouble and injury trouble that Indiana is facing. And they missed two straight free throws. How could that be? So Warren misses as well. So that was a golden opportunity. Singletary has struggled with his shot this season, but Danny hit one of the biggest shots of his season right there. And that's amazing that he has sufficient confidence to take that shot, but I think that epitomizes this Boston College team. These guys are just confident that they're going to be successful. 13.6 to go. Southern Utah inbounding, full court pressure by the Eagles. Have to defend the three. That's all you're worried about right here. They want to get it out of Monaco's hands. Seven to go. Sam, double team to House. Timeout called by the Thunderbirds with 3.3 to go. We'll step away one last time 
BC up by three. Just a freshman. Jeff Reeves, the other freshman, can't hit the short jumper. Haston, and he is fouled. And Kirk Haston, who's wearing a path to that free throw line, is back for two more. I thought J Jared Jeffries, number one, three, I thought he fouled out. Didn't they call that foul? No, they him? called that one on Coverdale, not on Jeffries, and then Coverdale argued and got the technical. Painting. Plenty of time to get one off for Southern Utah, down 68 65. Gus, and you have to figure that Boston College is going to come out and find Monaco and find House. And so maybe Jeff Sand is going to get the shot. Now, one thing that you could do, a lot of people in this situation say, since you're up by three, you should foul and send them to the line. So who do you think takes the shot as you take a look at the East Region? Iowa can see Oklahoma State game coming up after this. I would be surprised if Monaco or House could get open for the shot, but Sante, 43% three-point shooter, you have to be aware of him. Now, I'm not one of those people who think you ought to foul to get him to the line for two. You guard the three. Used to inbound. They need a three. Sant turns. the final. And Jeff Sand is the guy who catches the ball. Good patience by Sant. Gets himself some room. And this shot had a chance. Just a little short. And the... One more look. Sant has a chance. Kenny Walls actually slips a little bit, and Sant just not able to get it to go down. And the Eagles will take it any way they can get it. Southern Utah, their season coming to an end, and they were about three inches away from tying it up. The final 68-65 Boston College advances to the next round. The Chevrolet as we take a look at the East Region. And BC waiting for the winner of the Trojans and Cowboys game. The Chevrolet most valuable players, Monaco and House from Southern Utah combining for 47 of their 65 points. Troy Bell, a terrific second half. He finished with 18. 16 in the second half of play. Here's Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Gus, so Boston College over Southern Utah. You really can't ask for more than what the Thunderbirds gave tonight, Clark. Well, they really gave a tremendous effort. Monaco and House carried them, but Boston College got a big second half from Troy Bell and also did yeoman's work on the backboard all game long. Now, one of the other things that you look at, though, is, you know, Southern Utah, did they expose any problems that you saw with Boston College? Because I thought I saw Boston College throw up an awful lot of bad shots. Well, they chased a bunch of them down. They bagged their own groceries because they got a bunch of points on second shot opportunities. Again, the first game for a team like Boston College, you know the nervousness is there. They survive and advance, and that's the objective. All right, now we're going to send you on to San Diego, where Kent State is taking on Indiana, coming up on two and a half to play, but golden flashes by one. On the Hoosiers, let's send you there live and join Dick Enberg and Bill Walton. One second on the shot clock for Kent State, leading by one. With 2:34 left, Mitchell out of bounds. Throw something high at the basket. Get a lob. Well, they're coming to Huffman for three. It's good. It counts. Oh my, what a show! This junior, Trevor Huffman, is putting on. It's a four-point advantage for Kent State, their biggest lead of the game. Shoes Huffman having the performance. Maybe of a light there, but then you look back at his last game when he had 27 points. Haston, too easy at the hoop. One of the great players in the nation, Kirk Haston, leading all scorers with 26. 
And a timeout, Kent State leading by two. But with Trent Huffman working out of bounds here, sliding over, the beautiful screen by his teammate. Nothing but net on the three. The golden flashes of the Mid-American leading Indiana by two. The playmaker for Georgetown, four fouls. Four fouls, and he's not in the ball game to help alleviate some of this pressure and also run their offense, making it very difficult for Georgetown to get set. A lot of dribbling going on. Now Anthony Perry right now running the point, and a whistle on the drive. For Indiana, 26. Huffman, Kent State, 21, to lead their respective squads. It's a two-point game. Kent State in front with the ball. Two minutes to go. Great games like this are generally won by the team that singularly the hot hand, the best player. That's been Trevor Huffman. Mitchell off the glass. Short. Boy, good offensive rebound and a putback by Dimitri Shaw. Averages eight rebounds a game, the defensive player of the year in the conference, and now Mike Davis wants a timeout of his own. And the Kent State fans rise as one. The Golden Flashes by four. Three-pointer. Yeah. Right behind the line. Baker with a big three. That puts him at 12. James, here's a coaching question. When do you bring Braswell back with the four fouls? The 7.06 left. Well, I think he got away to about four minutes because right now Georgetown has done a pretty good job of, of sustaining without him. They haven't turned the ball over that much. Welcome back to Cox Arena in San Diego, California. This third game of the quadruple header finds Gary Waters, Kent State team, the underdogs from the Mid-American Conference leading Indiana by four. We're down to a minute and a half remaining. Who can guard Haston in the basket area? Been a problem. Traveling violation on the Hoosiers. Jeffrey's trying to drive and setting his self Andrew Mitchell in good defensive position, forced the turnover. Now, if you're Kent State, you've got the lead. There's still a ton of time. You can't even begin to start thinking about playing clock. Hoosiers coming with a trapping, pressing defense. Two Hoosiers oh. pick each other off. Andrew Mitchell with the ball in this Kent State team. Another reminder, one of the tops in the nation in free throw shooting. They haven't shown it tonight. And now they got the hand, ball in the hands of their star. They're only nine for 14. They've taken 10 fewer free throws on the night than Indiana. Huffman with a drive. Again off the top of the glass. The tip not there, and Jeffries able to pull it down for Indiana. Final minute. Shaw had another tip at it. Jeffries for three. Moye follows. He has 12, a career high for the freshman. A two-point game with 49 seconds. Moye just pushing Shaw out of the way. They're getting too conservative. Kent State is. Timeout called by Gary Waters. 43 and a half seconds to go. For a shoe to be relaced. <laughs> Tell you, it looked like, uh, look like he has one sock on and one sock off. You've seen the sock fashion. George Evans with the big black socks. Dean in and out. 55 all. And Perry playing some. CBS Sports Line stat of the game, the free throws with Indiana. Plus seven. And the game score. Kent State in front by two at 72-70. And the Golden Flashes with the ball. I have big defensive challenge here for Indiana. They need a stop. 28 seconds on the shot clock. Somebody's got to attack. They just can't sit here and think about running down the, the time. The ball hit the referee. Kent State ball out of bounds. Now 23 on the shot clock. Thrown away and out of bounds. He didn't call. For, yes, he did. Andrew Mitchell, ball going out of bounds. Kent State about to lose it. Mid-air calls time. <laughs> They've got 22 seconds to get off a shot. 37 seconds left.
Kent State. The big, long. Difficult. The job he's doing denying Eric Thomas's vision. Having trouble getting the ball in. Finally to Huffman, and they bring it back out to Mitchell. Spread the floor and let Mitchell go for a while. Working on Hornsby. But you don't think about playing conservative ball here. You still got to at least get one score. Six seconds on the clock, and Mitchell hits. The senior from Detroit has nine, a four-point game. Jeffries the other way. Batted out to him. With the Duke Blue Devils. It's... We'll go to the line at the other end with 7.6 seconds left and leading by four. What a remarkable turn of events here in San Diego. Cox Arena, the fans surging toward the court, sensing a historic upset. Indiana comes in as the fourth seed. Well, the improved play of the Mid-American Conference in the last three or four years They've uh, challenged early in the season some Big Ten teams. Central Michigan beat Purdue early. Kent State and the Miami of Ohio's and the Ball State's looking up at their Big Ten brothers and for a win against the Big Ten team. This is uh, immense for not only Kent State but for the Mid-American Conference. I think they're not partying in Kent right now. Trevor Huffman adds two more to his uh, total. Gary Water standing so tall and proud. Detroit native Indiana on the ropes big time less than eight seconds to go Pulling up for a three-pointer and Barely grazed the iron and out of bounds off Georgia. It's saved by Johnson Rush was on track to be the top player in the Big 12 and, uh, Hurt his thumb out seven games Shot by Sayoye won't go, but he feistily gets the rebound, diving out of bounds, and a shove and a foul called on Sean Coleman of Georgia. Foul trouble in the second half. Mike Davis as Hoosiers down by six last year in Bob Knight's last game on the bench for Indiana. Pepperdine devoured the Hoosiers in the first game, and now the long pass. And it's deflected out of bounds to Indiana. Six and a half seconds remain. Eric Thomas, the guy who's just coming back from the stress fracture, missed all but two games this year, making it happen on the defensive end, number 32. He's in for the three. And that pulls the Hoosiers within a three-pointer. But they're out of timeouts. Four and, and a half seconds, ball. and Huffman is fouled immediately with 3.6. Seconds remaining, Fife with a foul, Huffman with a long walk. He's an outstanding free throw shooter, needs at least one. But this is where the lifetime of having that ball in your hands really comes into play. A great free throw shooting team, Kent State. Two shot foul, double bonus. Gary Waters, always known as a coach who just gives so much hope, so much confidence to all of his players. That makes it a two possession game and all but seals the fate of the Hoosiers of Indiana. With no timeouts and a great free throw shooting opponent, extremely difficult, if not impossible, to come back for the Hoosiers. He rims out the second. Oh, and then the steal by Mitchell. And that's the frosting for Kent State. An upset here in San Diego as the Golden Flashes have beaten the Hoosiers 77-73. Gary Waters takes a big victory home to Kent State and now will wait his opponent on Saturday in the second round. Will it be Brigham Young University or the University of Cincinnati? They play next in the final of our quadruple header here from Cox Arena. There they are, Kent State joining uh, other upset winners today and that's the third Big Ten team to go out. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Indiana all lose today and our Chevrolet players of the game. Oh my, Trevor Huffman, <laughs> what a game. 24 points. He controlled the game for the winners and Kirk Haston in defeat showing why he is of All-America caliber. 29 points and seven rebounds. Back-to-back -back perfect games. 
for Trevor Huffman. 27 the last game in the MAC Conference Tourney Final, which they won when they beat Miami of Ohio. He had a huge run down the stretch. And he just comes out. Slow start today for Trevor Hoffman, but once he found his game and they got the confidence, felt that they could compete with the mighty Indiana Hoosiers, it was all Kent State. What a remarkable turn. Historical proportions this upset tonight. One of the biggest wins in the history of Kent State University for Bill Walton, Leslie Visser, Dick Henbert, so long from San Diego, the final again. Kent State 77, Indiana 73. Now to Greg and Clark in New York. All right, Dick Enberg, thank you very much. 77 73, the golden flashes move on. Meanwhile, Georgetown and Arkansas are in a timeout. 59 57, we'll take you there right after this. start for Missouri. Georgia's got to figure out some things defensively right now, Kevin. Coleman picks up his second foul. We're going to bring in freshman Traven Bryant and freshman Wesley Stokes. Quinn Snyder has four freshmen that play a lot of minutes. And you see the ribbons on the sport coach or the suit coach of the coaching staff of Missouri honoring the Victims in the Oklahoma State plane crash. Ten victims. Oklahoma and you see State. the patch on Sioye's shoulder there. It says Big 12. Completes the three-point play. Oklahoma State had some plane problems yesterday going up to Union Day on New York. Two canceled charters. But they are there safe and sound and playing tonight. And Missouri playing soundly. 13-0 over Georgia. The problem right now is the red light does not work, and that is usually the indicator for the official. The horn does not work either, so the substitute official, Andre Patillo, will take the air horn when he sees the clock go to 0-0. Bob, it's been a strange second half. Delayed because of the horn was stuck, and now the light is off, and it's a tight game. Two points with under two and a half to play. Underneath Burton. Fifty nine fifty nine Georgetown and Arkansas Boise Idaho West region game three under two minutes left. Third straight. Close game of the day. Leading scorer Carl Baker with a dozen. Joe Johnson with 12 as well for Arkansas. And Sweetney and Braswell with 10 for the Hoyas. We've had 10 ties and 10 lead changes. A little shot clock violation there on the Arkansas. Not able to get the shot off before the shot clock went off. But Georgetown has demonstrated their strength in the second half. The first half it was extremely sloppy until Georgetown started to go inside to their big people. They went with uh, Boomche Boomche, also brought in Lee Scruggs. Mike Sweetney's played a factor. Dean off the miss. Each possession so critical as he walks across the timeline. Now this is the time that your big time players Come alive. I mean, Joe Johnson has 12 points, hadn't been a big factor, but this is the time for Joe Johnson to exert himself on a little ISO here. Arkansas working the shot clock down to.